Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.8 and DECA Ironworks Simulations GF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to tutorial 15, Data Link and IFF. The GF17 is equipped with a Link 17 data link, uh, which is a proprietary data link system used by the Pakistan Air Force. Um, in DCS, we have uh, what I assume is a kind of gateway implementation between Link 16 and Link 17. Uh, and so um, coalition AWACS aircrafts can interoperate with it. Uh, but I'm not entirely clear if that is actually uh, realistic or a, capable, uh, a capability the aircraft has in the real world. In any case, um, it has a pretty cool data link which uh, incorporates both fighter-to-fighter -fighter modes and tactical uplink modes. This means that information gathered by your wingmen's radar is relayed to your aircraft, but also information from early warning aircraft is relayed to you as well. Um, this is information layered on your HSD, uh, so of course the HSD can get quite busy on the GF-17. It is quite a kind of composite display, you know, showing navigational information, RWR information, data link information, and also some radar and weapons information. So it can get a little bit busy. You have the ability to somewhat declutter it, uh, but there's no getting around the fact that there's quite a lot going on there. So. Um, let's go through the setup, because there are a couple of things that you need to do. And actually in the GF-17, as always, with it being a kind of low-cost, simple aircraft, it does have some limitations. So, um, let's go for that first, actually. <laughs> the, the aircraft has two radios, COM-1 and COM-2, the two communications radios. Unfortunately, COM-2 is also shared with the data link system. So if you engage the data link, you lose COM2. And in fact, you also lose the ability to receive TACAN. You'll notice here that just with my COM1 and COM2 programmed normally, um, I have TACAN available to me and I can turn on TACAN and I could program it and use it. You'll note in just a moment that once I make use of the TACAN, sorry, once I make use of the data link, TACAN functionality is lost. Uh, and of course, in addition, we lose the ability to make use of COM2. So, in any case, let's go through the setup of COM2 first. Okay, so I press the line select key next to COM2. That gives me all the options for my COM2 radio. Normally this would allow me to set my preset and choose the type of encryption and so on for a communications channel. However, we're going to use a special preset uh, which uh, basically switches the radio into data link mode. So if I click on the preset window and I enter 1-9-9-er, and hit line select, you'll notice that it changes to data mode and we can then choose the uh, the type of data transmission, TDMA or PTP. Uh, we're using TDMA, uh, that's the standard for using the data link. We then also have options to enable the network and to choose whether we're master or slave. Uh, master nodes on the network will receive information from the tactical data link, so that is uh, AWACS aircraft and ground stations and things like that. Uh, slave nodes will just participate in the fighter-to-fighter -fighter, uh, part of the data link. So what you're usually going to do is you're going to set the flight lead as a master and everybody else would just be slave. So I'm flight lead, I'm going to go master. Now notice here, I've got my TACAN functionality on the HSD right now. When I turn on the network, that's going to disappear and I'm going to get some different symbology. There we go, data link is on. You can see there's more symbols on here, but I've lost TACAN. As I said, that is a limitation of the GF-17. You can either have data link or TACAN. Uh, you can have both. And of course, while you're running the data link, you also lose the use of COM2. So I can hit return and go back to the main menu. Let's have a quick look at the HSD now and see what new functionality we've gained here. Uh, now, uh, keep in mind that uh, the HSD on the GF-17 is very, very complex and kind of composite. It's displaying information, as you can see right now, uh, from the radar warning receiver, from the missile approach warning system, from the data link, from the navigation system. There's a huge amount of information that can appear uh, on this screen. Uh, and so, of course, you may need to declutter. So with that in mind, let's go through the controls on the display. Um, as normal, I can increase and decrease the range as displayed on here. Um, I have the ability to um, turn on and off my, my track information, basically my navigational information. 
I can display a map background, which is quite useful. If you are going to display the map background, I would normally turn the brightness down quite a bit, because otherwise it makes it very difficult to read everything else that's on here. For now, we're going to turn the map off, though, and just going to declutter. You can switch between true and magnetic headings on this display. Uh, altitude allows you to uh, show or hide the altitude of data link contacts. So you'll see these data link contacts that are showing up on here. I'll go through the symbology of these uh, shortly. Uh, at the bottom right, they display an altitude in thousands of feet. Uh, these two sets here are currently at 20,000 feet. I can dis uh, display that or hide it using the Alt button. We also have EVP, which will display or hide your envelopes. Actually, to, d to demonstrate this properly, let's put the aircraft into intercept mode. We do that by pushing the T1 switch forwards and we're now in air-to-air -air intercept mode. Um, and EVP will hide or display the cones that you get on the HSD while in this mode. So the solid white cone is my radar scan volume, uh, and you can see that that changes as I change the, the range and such like. Uh, and the red dashed cone is the employment envelope of my currently selected weapon, which in this case is the SD-10. So that's what EVP does. Down the left hand side we have the ability to declutter the data link and the RWR. Uh, GND is for ground. Uh, the data link is capable of transmitting surface to air missile threats um, which are detected by their aircraft. We could declutter that if it was becoming problematic. The next one is actually your RWR control. Open means it will display all RWR contacts. Priority means it will only display priority contacts. I'm going to leave it on open. Unknown will hide or display unknown aircraft on the data link. AEW will display or hide enemy airborne early warning aircraft. And Friend will display or hide friendly aircraft. So next, let's go over the symbols that we've got for the data linked aircraft. The first ones we see here are green and um, circular. Green circular uh, aircraft are friendly and they have an ID inside the circle and an altitude displayed just outside the circle. So in this case I can see that this aircraft is ID number 13 and it's flying at 30,000 feet. The other piece of information that we get is this line. Uh, when there's a line on the circle that means that we've received this contact via data link only. We cannot currently see this aircraft on our radar. Uh, aircraft that are visible on our radar lose this line. And so that's just a way of telling us they are data link only. Uh, I'm going to bring the range down a little bit just now, and you can see that aircraft 12 is also appearing here in the data link. It also has a line. That's in fact our wingman. Um, and at the bottom of the screen, while you're in intercept mode, you actually get more information on each of these contacts. So ID number 12, if I go to 12 here, I can see it's bearing, range, uh, vertical speed, and current altitude. So I can see what he's doing. For some reason, he's ghosting a bit. I'm not 100% sure why it's doing that. Uh, I wonder if perhaps my tactical data link and my fighter to fighter data link are kind of duplicating information, but we'll ignore that for now. If I zoom my HSD out a little bit further, we're going to see two more types of contact. Uh, the yellow triangles are unknown aircraft. Now, in this case, I actually know that those are friendly, but they haven't been identified yet, so they're showing up as unknown. The red ones, the red triangles, are confirmed hostile contacts. You'll notice that both uh, the unknown and the uh, hostiles here are displaying without uh, a line underneath, so they're both within my radar scan volume. Uh, so that confirms that. These are also, the, the data link symbology is also duplicated on my radar, which is quite useful. So the next thing we're going to go over is the IFF. Um, there are basically two different types of IFF simulated in GF-17. Mode 4, uh, which works effectively with all DCS aircraft, where you can set a four-digit code, and if you have matching codes, then you're displayed as friendly. It also supports Mode 6, which is a GF-17 proprietary encrypted transponder, and that means that you will automatically be able to tell uh, GF-17s apart, whether they're friendly or hostile, and then other aircraft, if they're not in your coalition, will automatically show as hostile. So we can set that up as long as we're in the main menu of the UFC by pressing IFF, and we have two pages on the IFF. We have INT, which is for uh, intercept, so or sorry, interrogate actually, uh, and that's what we emit. 
If I press the dot on the right hand side here, we go to transponder and this is what uh, we respond to if we are IFF'd. So the only thing we really need to do here is for the interrogate, I'm going to turn on mode 6. You can only have one mode turned on at a time. Uh, you could have you know, one, two, three, or six. And if I go to code, uh, mode six allows you to flip between code pages A and B. Uh, I'm gonna leave mine on A just now. Uh, if you're using mode two or mode three A, we would have the ability to enter a four digit code. Mode one works in the same way, but it only has a two digit code. We're gonna go back now. So I'm using mode six to interrogate, and I'm going to now turn on my transponder, and I'm now emitting mode six as well. Uh, in response to queries. And that then means that um, other aircraft will be able to correctly identify me. And I'm gonna go back to the main page. So what can we do with this? Well, uh, your T4 switch, which is normally your push to talk, has a depress function. So if I have my radar set up like this, uh, and I depress, uh, I'm going to do an IFF scan. And what will happen is you'll notice that IFF was boxed for a moment there. Actually, do I need to push and hold? Yes, I push and hold. Oh, and here we go. We got a green response from these previously unknown aircraft here, and they're now showing as green circles. That's exactly what I would expect. Uh, now, that doesn't actually update anything on the data link. Um, we would need to do an IFF scan each time we want to double check and see what the status is of those aircraft. And you'll see that it does update the, the, uh, the data link, but only momentarily. Now, for some reason, I'm not seeing these other aircraft. They're a bit too far out right now. Let's try switching to range while scan and see if that picks them up. Uh, I'm actually going to reduce the scan volume a little bit. And that should make it a little bit easier to pick these up, but they might be too far out. Yep, yeah, nothing at all. These are already confirmed hostile in any case, so it doesn't really matter. The only difference would be is that we would get red contacts on the radar, uh, but those ones have already been identified hostile by my AWACS aircraft. Okay, so something else that you can do, you'll see that there is a, a C-Link uh, quick access button here on the right-hand multifunction display while you're in intercept mode. If I click that, I get some more um, options uh, that I can set on the data link. It confirms the My ID, the mode that I'm currently in, and I can flip it here. I can turn the network on and off, and I can change my channel, uh, channel ID. Now, the channel ID is common across all aircraft in a coalition. So um, if I was in a multiplayer server with multiple coalitions who all had JF-17s, I would need to make sure that I set the correct channel ID uh, and that would most likely be mentioned in the briefing. So just note that. Um, if for whatever reason this is wrong, you wouldn't see anything on the data link contributed by your coalition. Uh, and then the last option is group. If I press group, it actually shows detailed information about all aircraft who are in my coalition and within my group. So you can see here, number two has an asterisk because that's me. Uh, I'm in flight number one. I am role lead and it shows my current fuel level. Uh, ID number 12 is also in flight number one, so that's my wingman. Role is confirmed as W for wingman, and I can actually have a real-time indication of how much fuel uh, he currently has remaining. And number 13 is actually my friendly AWACS. He's flight number six, he's a lead, and it gives me an indication of his fuel as well. You can see there's quite a difference between his fuel burn and my wingman's fuel burn. If I hit the HSD quick access link, it's gonna pop me back into this display. And if I uh, reduce my view, I can see here number 13, that's my AWACS. Uh, he's currently making his way across my HSD left to right. If I actually increase my scan volume on my radar, we might eventually pick him up and then that line will disappear just to confirm that he's now uh, also detected by my radar. I'm in a four bar scan, so I should eventually pick him up. But anyway, we're not gonna wait for that. Uh, and as I mentioned before, RWR indications are overlaid on here as well. Uh, you can see E3A is an RWR indication here and it's co-located with that data link symbol. So I can be pretty sure of that aircraft type there, which is quite useful. That is pretty much everything you have uh, with regards to the data link and the IFF and the GF-17. Uh, the data link cannot be used for guiding missiles, so it's really just a situational awareness tool. You do still need to uh, bug or lock up a target with your own radar before launching an SD-10, but it does mean that you could say enter a target area with your radar completely silent 
uh, and you would then be able to just use data link symbols on uh, the HSD, which is quite useful. So, I hope you all found that very useful. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.